Okay, so welcome to everybody. We are in the in the last uh, session of this uh, of of this afternoon for ETC. In the last session, we are going to to there will be the presentation of Michael Maron, that is an actual member of uh, the OpenStreetMap Foundation board is, since uh, 2015. He's also the community lead uh, team lead at Mapbox, a co-founder of uh, the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. I remind to you that if you have any question, any doubts, and any comments also about the talk that we're going to see, to connect to the pad and to, to visualize, uh, to, to ask your question. Also, don't wait at the, the end of the, of the talk since there will be a little bit of delay. So when you have your question, feel free to ask uh, during also the, the, the talk. And uh, the talk that is titled An Incomplete History of Companies and Professionals in OpenStreetMap. And we're going to present uh, the, the bright and darks of, of the history of the companies inside Osma. So, well, hello. This is Mikkel, and this is my talk about how awesome companies are. Just kidding, it's me, it's Mikkel. I'm not a, not a corporate sellout, come on. You know me, Mikkel from OpenStreetMap. Let me get out of my, just home from the office, sorry. Let me get out of this. Oh, man. You know, our day at work, making the big bucks. And come home and spend some time on OpenStreetMap. All right. How's it going, everybody? It's my talk. Incomplete history of companies and professionals in OpenStreetMap. And uh, I'll be honest with you, you know, I have some objectives here. Um, I think a lot of what I hear, what we hear in the narrative about companies in OpenStreetMap, it's got things a bit wrong, especially in the history, especially in the, um, I think, much more uh, blurry and gray area of the early days. Um, and so in part, I'm hoping to uh, reset the narrative a bit and um, help to like define what, what is the productive relationship between OpenStreetMap and companies and not let them off the hook, not let them off the hook. I am gonna say a lot of nice things about companies, um, but there are a lot of big issues um, and we need to find a uh, space to fix what's broken. Uh, but first of all, you know, since the very start, companies have been integral part of OpenStreetMap and um, I don't think the line um, between you know, the volunteer and the professional was, was very clear uh, from the start. This is Steve Coast. This is Steve Coast speaking at the first State of the Map in Manchester in 2007. If you saw any of the early talks by Steve, you'd recognize slides like this, uh, where he's explaining kind of the, the pressure that OpenStreetMap exerts on the geodata market. Um, and that's you know, really how Steve was positioning it and thinking about it as the quality of OpenStreetMap at f a free price, uh, as the quality increases, it puts downward pressure on the price of uh, proprietary data. And so the framing was within, you know, within the uh, company market-based landscape. Um, you know, Steve put it very, you know, distinctly um, as uh, thinking about like the role of OSM is there's a pathway forward, you know, um, on the one hand, be an open map, be a, be a product that like everyone could, could really use um, an open version of Google Maps or a socialist utopia where focus is on, on um, the guts of data um, and everyone can make their own map. And um, I mean, I think this is, uh, the reality has become much more complicated, um, but the, the tensions and the, you know, that, that question of like where OpenStreetMap lies was always, is always blurry. It was always, um, you know, is this a binary choice? Um, as it turns out, not, a, not at all. This map, um, you may recognize as uh, the poster that Tom Carden and Steve Coast produced in the early days of OpenStreetMap. It was the first image I saw of OpenStreetMap at a talk in 2005. Um, it is aggregating all the GPS traces of London um, from that time. And it was so convincing that this idea of everyone walking around with a GPS unit could map the world. Here's a map. It's a, uh, recognizably a map of London just from GPS traces. Maybe this really is possible. And guess what? 
most of the data that you see here came from a private company called eCourier, which donated a huge amount of its GPS data from its drivers that was delivering packages for money across London um, to make this beautiful map. And so this data didn't end up being that useful for OpenStreetMap, but the image created from this data was t terrifically convincing um, that this was an idea that could work. Not long after I met Steve um, and, and saw that poster, I was setting up meetings with the likes of Yahoo and O'Reilly, O'Reilly Venture Tech, Google, um, to see if there was some kind of like business model or way of, of um, funding OpenStreetMap. It was obviously going to take a ton of resources. It wasn't going to build itself. And um, how was that going to happen? And so there was a lot of conversations. I mean, I, um, this one, this email was just kind of hilarious to me. Uh, after a meeting from, with Google, they, they wanted to set up and test Steve um, in some of their recruiting tests, um, which I was very against. I thought this was a terrible, disrespectful way to treat this really crazy project, which hadn't proven itself at all um, at the time. Um, the point is that we were, it was very blurry, and we were trying to think about, well, how is this going to, how is this going to work? How is this going to take off? Um, and so that line, uh, this hard line, was just not there from the very beginning. Um, Steve um, organized to support himself, his own, you know, his work on OpenStreetMap, on the core of the infrastructure, um, on promoting and advocating for OpenStreetMap. Sorry, I'm just checking my time here. Um, for uh, through first through the month of OSM, when anyone could come and donate time, uh, donate money, and would pay for Steve's time. Uh, later, Multimap, a UK company, came around and sponsored Steve to do to do some of that work. Um, and this was one of the days where it's like it wasn't quite sure how this was all going to come together. Um, so th very thanks very much to Multimap. Um, I love the last line in this blog post. Like, what's in it for them? Well, that's not entirely clear right now. Obviously, there is publicity. Um, what is it for them? Um, obviously, there's there's a there's leverage here on the on the geodata market is what I think it ultimately was about. But OpenStreetMap benefited, and I think that was a good bet. Though MultiMap doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, Yahoo, aerial imagery. Not long after this, not long after we set up those meetings, um, they did an amazing thing. They donated their imagery for use in OpenStreetMap. Anyone could edit it, uh, digitize on top of it. Uh, this was huge. And yes, I hear derisively people talking about armchair mapping, but I challenge anyone no matter who you are, if, to go back um, and use Landsat imagery as the basis for, um, for your, your mapping. I did that um, in, well, not even using Landsat, just using GPS traces to, to, to map building footprints in Brighton. It sucked. Uh, it was kind of interesting, but it was hard. Um, I'm very glad we have this resource. We have companies to thank for it. Um, it's very valuable, and we get, we get to use it and create free data. It's amazing. Uh, you may recognize these guys. You see the, the back of Matt Amos's head and the back of Andy Allen's head there from the CloudMade days. Um, they spent a lot of time working on the core infrastructure of OpenStreetMap. Um, and now I, I've heard that the change from OSM, the API 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, well, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but 0 0.6 is still the, the API that we use today. Um, and these guys spent time on it um, in their working day. Um, that's awesome. Now, I'm not saying CloudMade was sorely responsible for, uh, solely responsible for OSM API 0 0.6, but pretty significant contribution. Um, finally, you know, looking at some of the early history, back to State of the Map in Manchester. This is a lineup um, from the two days of State of the Map. And this really represents like the core of the project at the time. People who were like so into OpenStreetMap that they traveled to Manchester. They gave talks. Um, and I added emoji money bags um, to all of the presenters who have had um, a professional uh, role that uses OpenStreetMap, connects with OpenStreetMap, or connects with mapping. And it's everything from, yeah, from individual cartographers to people in big companies. Um, all but one, two, all but four, really, of these presenters were um, 
were uh, now have had some professional benefit. Um, that line between volunteer and professional is just uh, doesn't hold. It's a good thing. It's a good thing that we can be incentivized and have the, the, the privilege of working on OpenStreetMap as part of our professional lives. Um, but I think uh, there's kind of a little bit of mythology, mythologizing the pure volunteer, um, which just isn't, isn't that important and isn't representative of the history of the project. Not to dismiss pure volunteers. I think they are awesome. I just don't think that is all, you know, that that is the, the idealized way of contributing to OSM. Uh, okay, so companies, I think that there's a misperception that all companies think the same about OpenStreetMap or that you know, they're kind of lumped together. Companies trying to make the big bucks off of, off of, the, off the back of our community. Um, maybe that's true of some of them. I have one uh, quite insidious example. Let me just tell you about what this company has been up to, okay? First of all, if you go to OpenStreetMap.org, they've integrated their services um, into this website, essentially free advertising is being provided by our community to this company. Um, they've, they are really so present on our communication channels. Um, not only are they like the dominant like voice, in some ways they're controlling the spectrum of our thoughts about OpenStreetMap. Now, here's where it gets really crazy. Now on the foundation, they've maneuvered uh, to retain a board seat for their company through multiple employees. Uh, with uh, someone stepping down and immediately another employee from that company coming and filling that seat. Um, and listen, here's what they say about their, their company motto, essentially. Free geodata created by projects like OpenStreetMap will increasingly become attractive for commercial uses. Very attractive and very commercial. Of course, I'm talking about Geofabric, who are awesome and do a lot of great things and who are not horrible in the slightest. However, um, based off of the evidence, it was not hard for me to construct that narrative. Um, let me say, there's lots of companies uh, and lots of different kinds of companies in, uh, in OpenStreetMap. You have independent professionals, um, you know, likes of Richard Fairhurst, who's a professional cartographer, small consultancies like Geofabric, like CART, but also SEO spammers who we definitely do not consider to be good actors in OpenStreetMap. You have companies which have sort of emerged from OpenStreetMap, people who are like embedded in the community who have now, um, you know, part of companies which have emerged and grown, like, like CloudMade, uh, Mapbox, uh, Scobbler, who uh, became part of Telenav. Um, what's interesting in more recent years are sort of the large established companies coming into OpenStreetMap. Um, maybe there is something distinctly different. I don't know. Um, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, we know these folks and... Um, as OpenStreetMap has become more valuable, um, none surprisingly, um, it's, uh, we've seen more interest from big companies. And then there's this other, this other class of interesting companies who do outsourcing work, um, who we don't normally hear about, not big, big brands, uh, doing work largely for the large established companies, so the likes of Global Logic and RM, RMSI. So it's important to see the, the distinctions, I think. But despite all those distinctions, what I think is important is not if you're a volunteer or professional. I mean, it's important to recognize that. But it's really about what you bring to the map. You can be a volunteer and bring lots of, lots of crap to the map. You can be a professional and bring, be an SEO spammer. What it is is the quality and the intention and what you do. Um, and listen, companies do bring a lot to, to OSM. They bring code. Um, this is an amazing slide from John Firebell's talk uh, from 2014 State of the Map US, which you should watch. Um, it's really great insights and in what it takes to, to um, uh, update the website uh, as, as was done. Our current website, OSM.org, the look and feel is largely from this time. That is the pull request <laughs> comments um, stream for, uh, it is huge uh, screenshot. And, um, there's a lot of dedicated work, um, a lot of contributed code um, to make the website better. There is money. Money does is important for funding software development, for funding servers, for the conference. Um, and, and companies have always uh, been generous about this. Um, 
sometimes seemingly too generous. Uh, there was a, the MapQuest $1 million um, dollar, uh, div announcement um, in 2010, um, which did actually get put, you know, put to a lot of, of, of good use, um, supporting you know, work on Mathnik, on Nominatum, and many other things. Um, and uh, talked to Randy Meech, and the story, story behind this is like Randy coming in to, to MapQuest and then part of AOL, wanted to do something different, wanted to do something with OpenStreetMap. And this was, remember, MapQuest used to be, was the mapping company. Um, and at this point was still trying to like figure out how to, how to catch back up uh, and overtake Google. Uh, maybe do something with OpenStreetMap. Someone higher up in the, in the company said, oh, what, what do you need, a million dollars? And uh, Randy said, oh yeah, that'll do. Um, though, at the time, who do you give a million dollars to in OpenStreetMap? The foundation... Um, which I think is, you know, what Randy was hoping for is like, let's donate some money and, and see, help good things to happen. It was definitely in 2010, not in a position to absorb $1 million. I think we're getting there today and in, in doing good work with it. Uh, I think we could, we could start to consider that kind of budget within the foundation, but it was a lot back then. Um, so money has its issues, but it's important. Um, I recommend you check out uh, Randy's talk from State of the Map US in 2015 the uh, OpenStreetMap MBA um, talk. Also at that conference, uh, Alex from Mapbox uh, gave the paid mappers are coming talk, and they did come, and um, and they were great people. Um, this is right before I joined Mapbox. I joined this team. Um, people were really passionate about the map and really understood the excellent place that they were in um, to contribute to OpenStreetMap as part of their job. Um, so they contribute a lot of data, um, and a lot of companies are contributing um, very good data uh, to OpenStreetMap. There's also problematic data, I will, I will admit, um, but a lot of it is good and should be recognized as such. Um, and people from companies are just contributing their resources and time. Um, this was the State of the Map logo from 2009, 2010. It was, uh, it was designed by a CloudMate employee. Um, lots of, of people from companies have helped spend time on State of the Map. In uh, 2016, the logo and the website and all the design work was done by someone from Mapbox, Tatiana. Um, and there's lots of work that people ways that people at companies have like have have given time, uh, have spent time on things beyond you know money and code and data, but like on helping to build our, our community and how we work, to, how we like come together. Now. Um, I think start to try to peel back a little bit like what it looks like on the inside um, for companies which are working in, in OpenStreetMap. I think it's really important to understand that internally to a in company, um, no matter how big or small, there's not consistency. You know, there's, a, there's work to present a consistent result externally. But just like any group of people internally, there's debate, there is competition, there's uh, multiple strategies, and um, often with you know, especially with OpenStreetMap, there's one you know, personality or a group of personalities who are really driven in to to champion OpenStreetMap as something that a company could do, um, both for the value uh, of it as well as like what it can you know what it can do for the world and can do for for this community. So. Um, I think, you know, one way to think about it, and this is uh, a quote that um, Randy gave uh, when, I, when I talked with him about this, was, you know, businesses don't want OpenStreetMap. There is someone within a business who wants OpenStreetMap. Um, and I think that's really important to understand that there's, this, there's a lot of internal dynamics. Um, another thing to really realize is that companies are not static. You know, they, not only do they, they change strategies and tactics, and that's important to realize because... Um, you know, the amount of effort that a company may be making today is going to be different um, to, tomorrow. Could be more, could be less. Just the same as with individuals within OpenStreetMap. You know, someone may get another hobby um, or may, you know, might get busy with something else and can't do OpenStreetMap in the same way. Um, also, companies learn um, and, and adapt. And I think it's important to recognize that, yes, there can be past mistakes, but, you know, they adapt and can do better. 
So when companies look at OpenStreetMap, and particularly when people who are trying to be that champion for OpenStreetMap, I think some of the frustrations are that we don't have clear expectations of what open uh, what companies can do to do right. Now you might say that there are you have articulated them, um, but I don't think that they are. I mean, we are as a community a cacophony, um, and there's not like a, a single point of you know, point of view. It's a feeling that a company can do no right, no matter how good um, a company might do, judged on the on like what you know the biggest mistake or the last mistake. So there's not a lot of listening and explanation. That's I think an impression. It's really hard to communicate, and that it's hard for a company to communicate, uh, admittedly. Um, and I think finally, you know, something I learned from joining Mapbox, um, and I've been at Mapbox for about five years. I've been with OpenStreetMap for about 15 years, so a third of my time has been in a company, you know, working working with OpenStreetMap. Um, I've learned a lot about what it takes to build a product here uh, when I, in, in my time at Mapbox. And it's hard to take, you know, to make something that someone likes so much and is so useful to them that they will pay money for it. Um, it is not as simple as just slapping a logo on, um, on a download of um, Planet File. And uh, I think there's oftentimes is not as much understanding as there should be of like what of the challenge of like going from um, lots of resources out there, whether data, code, and um, creating a creating a product, and what product thinking and how you support customers in those relationships. It's it's a lot of work, and I think it, it deserves some recognition. Um, companies internally um, organize to work with the community, and they do that because they recognize as companies. Um, they need to have a, um, you know, a higher, uh, there's a higher expectation and they really should, should, should deliver um, better performance to that, to that community. And that means um, the communi- communication um, ideally is coordinated um, internally and that there's, there's work to think about how you're presenting and working within the community. Um, so I gave a talk at the Hot Summit last year, um, really directed at Hot, explaining how Mapbox organizes itself um, internally um, to work with OSM, including here's a screenshot of a um, a GitHub ticket where, uh, where we're internally talking about how to respond to a change set comment and do that well. And I think that's just the facts of how companies have to have to organize themselves. All right. Companies are great, blah, 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 blah. Okay. They cause problems. And um, I don't think it's settled. I don't think we've settled how we can organize um, ourselves as uh, in companies or um, in the community to really um, take, you know, to solve these problems together. First of all, companies operate at a massive scale. Uh, this is an image from Jenny Anderson's research. He's also talking at this conference. Check it out. Um, there's a lot of edits uh, from companies, and that is uh, something that is hard to deal with. And we need to have good structures to uh, on all on both sides uh, within the community, within companies, uh, to to work at this scale. Um, I don't think we have that. I don't guidelines are good. I don't think they're enough. Um, yeah, we need to we need to think about scale. Uh, Companies are hesitant to be transparent and hasn't and have difficulty communicating um, in a in a public sphere. Uh, communication is by committee. That's by that it has to be that way often. Um, and so a lot of conversations, we have frank conversations, happen in public. They happen today. They happen in the past. This is the logo of OSM Plus, which was a kind of an attempt at a commercially oriented OpenStreetMap conference, um, and. I think that's a problem. I don't think, um, I think there needs to be a way for com- companies' point of view to be to be known and for there to be dialogue, um, but there's not like a, a healthy place for that to happen. Um, and I think, you know, companies also should need to take the blame for not like making the effort to figure out how, how to do that well and to, to take that requirement seriously. So there's some things to do about the uh, communication and transparency, definitely. 
Um, the placement, the place of, of companies in the foundation um, has long been a, a question. I mean, we have corporate membership. We also have individuals who have membership. Um, so before Global Logic, um, which, by the way, I think w really was a misunderstanding. Um, there was Gobbler a long time ago, uh, uh, did a mass sign up of employees. They were going to be 10% of the entire membership. And it was interesting back then, the board voted to um, kind of push their, their memberships forward so they wouldn't vote in an election, which um, most of the community uh, was really against. And so there was an opposite, uh, opposite dynamic back then. Um, marketing and PR in the media, you know that reporters get things wrong, like CloudMaids, OpenStreetMap, um, an egregious example. Uh, this is not always the fault of the companies, though companies sure like, yes, like use fluffy, hypey words. Um, but also, it's a game of telephone, especially with reporters, and then it goes through their editors and want to try to don't get into all the details and you know the fine points. And so, oftentimes, the misunderstandings get blown out of proportion um, in the media. And that's that's um, I don't have an answer to that, but it's a hard thing we need to we need to think about. So some um, some ways forward. Yes, I think we need to. Um, look at how organizations relate to each other. And um, I think the OpenStreetMap Foundation is in a, in a better place now to center the relationships with companies and be a place where companies can, can talk to the community. And I'm not talking about a smoke-filled room off to the side. Like, I think there needs to be clarity and transparency. But in order to hold like, a productive conversation, I think OSMF is in a good position to figure out how to um, facilitate that. We need to set clear expectations. Um, Welcome.openstreetmap.org, the welcome mat is one attempt at that. We could really make that a lot better. Um, we could use that a whole lot more um, in order to set expectations of what we want from companies. We have a format within the, the foundation to hear from companies, uh, the advisory board, which includes some corporate members and local chapter heads. I, I, I don't think it's worked. Um, as a single place to have a conversation. The interest between local chapters and companies is so different. You want to ask kind of about different things. So I think we should separate those. Maybe a corporate members group, I don't want to say board, you know, a group where you can, can have conversations um, that help to bring companies' views into the open. And maybe that should be open to all tiers of corporate members, not just the top tiers, because we want to hear from smaller companies too and their points of view. Uh, finally, for individuals who are professionally working with OpenStreetMap, um, how do we, uh, what are our ethics? What, do, what is important? What should we as individuals um, really commit ourselves to, commit our, to, uh, to bring into the community? You know, in other disciplines, there's, there are oaths. Uh, doctors have the Hippocratic Oath, first, do no harm. Um, if you become a, an employee of the federal government um, or or are elected to, to Congress or, or join the military, you, you, you say an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Um, I've done that. Um, our board chair has done that. And um, I don't know, maybe we need to have an open stream map oath um, so that we really commit to um, doing right by uh, this amazing community. So that is all. Um, as I said, this is incomplete. Um, incomplete in coverage of the history and of the work in companies and of both the good things and the bad things about companies and certainly the solutions. So I am now very interested to continue the conversation um, and, and hear what others think and figure out how we can really um, solidify, you know, put this, put the relationship on more firm footing so that we can fix the things that need to be fixed and, um, and do a lot of good productive work together no matter how we're coming to open stream map. That's all. Thanks. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mika, for your presentation. Very interesting and was very appreciated by everyone, the starting with your head, that the one that you are wearing, we are wearing now. So it was really appreciated. And there was a lot of comment about it, but also about all the talk. So I start with some question that I saw in the pad. The first one is by Gregory that asks, uh, at the start, the corporation were good for founding time. Now, as a foundation and health can give out to microgrants, 
So volunteers don't directly rely on corporate money. It is better to have that separation? I think it's a great development. Yeah, um, it's, it's excellent that our you know, structured entities within OpenStreetMap now have the facility to um, provide support in many ways um, to volunteers. And, and money is one of them. But there's other ways to support volunteers, and I think the you know the foundation and and he's like hot and and the local chapters can can do a lot more so that that folks can find ways to contribute. Um, I don't think that precludes companies supporting things directly, of course. But I'm I'm really glad that uh, the foundation in particular is in a in a stronger position now. Okay, thanks. So there is a similar question that talks about, uh, should we make a distinction between a profit-driven corporation and printed companies? So between the, and the, between the individuals inside the corporation and the official action by the, the company? Yeah, um, I saw, I was watching the pad and I, I saw there were some edits, like there was also like an association between profit-driven and large and, and purpose-driven and small. I don't think that, necessarily holds. And even within a single company that can be, um, there can be um, nodes of, of people and groups and work within a company which are, um, you know, working at different purposes. Um, but to answer the question, yes, I think it's important to make those distinctions. Um, and there's a lot of other ways to um, make distinctions about what companies, um, companies role in OSM and how we, how we work with them. I think the most important distinction is, you know, what are they contributing um, and how are they developing and learning and how uh, how receptive are they um, to, to OSM um, while also keeping in mind, yeah, are they big? Are they small? Um, what's their, what are their motivations? All those things are important. I think it's important to realize that whether you're, if you're talking about communities or volunteers, incentives um, really matter. And um, it's it's complicated for everyone who's in in OpenStreetMap. So I I think that that's excellent. Yeah, we should we should keep in mind all those distinctions. Okay, so there is ah, more a question about uh, general about the, the volunteer. If you, if you are dedicated to our volunteer map editing, can we or should we find place to work that contribute to SM? Do we have any suggestion on how to approach to this issue? Um, Maybe be careful what you wish for. Um, <laughs> it has has good good sides and uh, and tough sides as well. Um, I I don't know if I have any. I mean, you know, there are a lot of uh, folks from companies at State of the Map. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, um, find them and talk to them this weekend um, or reach out after. I think it's um, you know maybe that's something we should be talking about more as a community and, and within the foundation. Um, what is what are the for people who are interested to make this part of their professional life? Um, what are those pathways? How do you do that? Um, what do you need to? Um, what are what are good experiences? What are examples of bad experiences? Um, I I don't have I don't have all the answers to that, but I think it's you know it's especially as OSM grows. Especially goes to other parts of the world, um, you know the the opportunity to work professionally. You know, as I said, in two thousand seven, was it two thousand eight? You know, the, the first state of the map. Um, a lot of people were doing this kind of work professionally, and I think um, no, what we should we should encourage that and find ways to make it work really well. Okay, thanks. Just a fun uh, a fun question. Where did you get that at? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's um, my my wife uh, was uh, unhappy that it was from my wedding. <laughs> I don't wear it. Uh, I've, I broke it off after a long time, broke it out. Um, so, yeah, it's from my wedding. I need to wear it more often, I think, is the what it's I'm getting. Cool. It's very yeah, cool. I get a lot of positive, positive feedback, so exactly. yeah, I'm going to wear it, wear it around the house. So uh, why do you think companies and corporations no more invest in improving OpenStreetMap core but they invest in uh, mapping and developing tangential tool? Well, there's some truth to that. I, I would challenge the assumption there. I mean, I think there, there are plenty of examples of companies contributing to the core. Like I said, you know, Mapbox worked on the OpenStreetMap website. I think you can consider ID part of the, the core. Um, uh, and I think there's even other examples happening now which people may not be aware of. 
Um, but the truth there is that it is harder to do work in the core because there's more dependencies, there's more, more um, interests, there's uh, uh, the people who are involved in the core are, I would you know, say, stretched thin. And um, that's something that we're, you know, we're thinking about on the board within the foundation. There's a lot of conversations about how can we make the core tools of OSM something where there's more, uh, more space for contribution. And, um, and I think that whether you, wherever you're coming from, um, there's, yeah, to be, okay. to be continued. <laughs> no, it's, it's very clear the reply. Uh, I just, okay, I lost one. Okay. Uh, they're asking for the, the slides, but I think that uh, they will be published at the end with all the, with all the material. I put a link in the, in the pad as well. Uh, okay. Thanks. So another question, uh, companies do not want OSM, people want OSM, but there is, is there not a danger of, of a company over a negative output, over shedding anything good they might have been not doing for to, to OSM? Should we engage even uh, with such uh, companies? I mean, I think there's both uh, symptoms of two negative views on companies and two positive views on what companies do. And I don't think there's a really, there's a lot of like fact-based assessment of companies' contributions. It is, um, you know, something a company may have done years ago or uh, is, can overshadow lots of good work and lots of good learning. Um, I think that's the case with, with Facebook. Um, it doesn't mean that they have it perfect or that there's not more to learn. Um, but it's, if things are going well, <laughs> then, um, uh, I think that's just a truism in general. It doesn't get as much attention. Um, and so, uh, you know, within open street map, if I think that, uh, there needs to be kind of a, a real clear eyed look at companies' contributions, what's the good, what's the bad. And, um, if a company is really doing bad, like, yeah, we should, we should be, um, we should be taking taking action, and I think you know the one example which I think is is really consistent is like spamming, um, sort of you know SEO work within OSM. It just doesn't. It's not what OSM is about. And uh, um, but outside of that, I just I don't think that as a the general conversation has a really good handle on um, on the good and the bad. And there's there's maybe efforts to for the to make the bad overshadow the good um, by some folks. Okay, thanks. I joined two questions. There was one like a little bit provocatory. Who is the, the tool came out and uh, why we cannot write a complete uh, history of, uh, you say that your history is partial or is, is not total and why we don't write this uh, all together, a collaborative history. These are not, there is not a real reply to this question. It's just a provocation to. Yeah, no, it's good. Your tool. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good idea. I don't want to claim that I have all that I, that even everything that I've said is right. Like a lot of this stuff is 15 years ago and I may well have like misremembered something. And so, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to tell the whole story. I think telling the whole story is, is a good idea. Um, but it's hard. Um, but yeah, let's do more of it. Um, who's this talk for? Um, I really had in mind maybe, um, similar to Frederick, you know, people who are newer to OSM and hear a lot of the, I think the, the narratives and the, the, the rhetoric, rhetoric and the discussions that happen and um, may not have all of the, the history. Um, and even people who've been around a long time may not have had all, all of the history. I, for instance, I've never, I've never talked about like setting up VC meetings for Steve in 2005 before. Um, and uh, that, so yeah, I think that there's, there's just a lot we along the way. I think the the in the early days of, of OSM, first five years, I think everything was a lot more fluid. It was a lot more experimental, um, uh, maybe more fun. And uh, not that it's not fun now; it's very fun. But uh, I think there's uh, at a certain point um, the we kind of got a little bit stuck in some of the some of the the arguments. And so I, I'm trying to very transparently, like I'm trying to like, let's, let's reset that. And let's look, let's look again with fresh eyes and um, not to 
relitigate things of the past, but like how are we going into the future in a way that's that's going to be be productive for and and good for OpenStreetMap and for our community. Okay. Okay, Art. Thanks. So uh, assuming uh, another question coming back to, to the role of the companies. For companies that are bad actors, how we should we identify them and how we should deal with them? It's not simple. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, that's a very good question. I mean, I think I think that's something we have to reckon with. Um, uh, I think that's really there's a role for for the foundation and thinking that through. Um, but I don't I don't have a good answer to be honest. It's a good question. Yeah, sure. There is not there is not a simple question. It can be a discussion between the, also the, all the members of the foundation yeah, yeah, yeah. to identify, and also from the board to identify which are which are the criteria that define the, that are, uh, a company is a bad actor and which are the action. That's yeah, we thing. should be we should be a lot more I think clear about what we consider, you know, positive contribution to OSM and um, and communicate that so that it's also you know there's also a, we set the expectations. Um, I don't think I don't think presently expectations for for companies in OSM are very clear because it's it's just a cacophony of voices, and um, I think say to start with setting like what is what is a, a positive contribution would be a really good start. Okay, so uh, there is an, another question. What's the secret to asking slash telling Google or Facebook anything? Do we do the, there are too big to wear the average person anymore? Like press the feedback back button. Or oh, there is the, the, the only way is to have a media media make stories which they must uh, reply to. That is really not the only way. I mean, Google. I don't know. I mean, I know I know folks at Google, but it's not really on the you know radar of of OSM. We try to. I mean, there was a lot of conversations and work in the early days to get uh, Google interested in OSM. Um, but uh, obviously, they, they took a different a different approach. Um, likes of, of Facebook, um, there's a couple things. First, people who are um, who are at Facebook are part of the community. That, so there are individuals. Yes, you can't like email a you know webmaster at facebook.com and expect a reply about you know some question about OpenStreetMap. But there are people you can talk to. Um, and I really mean like talk to them. I mean, it's one thing to have a you know a conversation. Um, on a mailing list or or in social media, but um, like Alan Mustard laid out in um, in his talk, actually getting on the phone and people and really getting in time to have a conversation is and understand um, their points of view and and I think is a really good idea. And there, are, I think, guarantee there there are people um, from all companies who are are ready for that. Um, if you know you don't know who they are, then that's I mean I think that's something that we can work on. Um, and the other thing is that, like, there's, you know, I think that there should be more of an organizational relationship between the foundation and companies, um, so that the, you know, concerns that are are raised and issues that are, are found can be can be talked about um, with a group of people where there's, you know, there's an ongoing relationship, um, and that's not to, you know, not to um, make it easy to 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 uh, let companies off the hook for problems, but um, developing that kind of um, organizational tissue between between OSMF and companies, I think, will help to raise things up and um, and have substantive um, conversations and replies to them. Okay, thanks. Just the last question. After we have some comments that are some funny, so we can read it. <laughs> So, uh, what do you think about the way that some German companies took in past? They visited the regular, often local meetings in towns and regions of the OSM community in order to learn how OSM works. You think this is a good approach or a worst approach that doesn't work? I think that's great. Yeah, no, definitely um, going and connecting with with people directly um, around around the world is is great i think that happens we just may not all be aware of, of when that you know when that's happening i mean i know in the us mapbox is like has a lot of has been quite involved with different meetups and we have we, we know a lot of folks here we probably know less of the folks in germany it's harder to get to but i think like there's you know 
when we can all travel again, <laughs> or maybe even just like joining via, you know, um, via uh, online chat. Like I think, yeah, having direct conversations is is really good. So yeah, that's a you know what's hap what's happened in Germany. I think sounds like a great a great model for other parts of the world to pick up. Okay, just just a fun thing that is a is a required uh, IP rep battle between of history about you and Frederick. <laughs> there are more uh, more uh, up voted at the population of the world, but there is some suggestion also by Heather that uh, there is there are been some past uh, of this epic battle inside the, those foundation board meetings. So just one last question that's uh, that is that is written now. Uh, with is just wait some second that is finished to writing and also just reading some of the okay so the last question since we are a little bit late with more one on the ground mapping community building on the ground beyond the beyond the, the humanitarian osm how does see the role of poor local community volunteering uh yeah this is a very complicated topic and one that I'm intimately familiar with. I uh, was part of the start of Map Kibera in uh, 2009. There is a, a very uh, a poor slum in Nairobi. And uh, I very quickly found that like the, the model of volunteering that we, we had in Europe and in, in the States and other places doesn't, doesn't work. Um, and so it's a big, yeah, it's a big question. I think um, uh, the important thing I think for the global open map community to to realize is that things are going to look different, and um, but that doesn't that ultimately doesn't take away from the passion and what people want to contribute to the the project. And um, so if there's you know no, you cannot expect that people are going to come to a meetup at you know at a, a coffee shop in Nairobi if they're living in Kibera because, uh, you know, they, they, you know, maybe that's a far way to go. If it's in the evening, it may not be safe to get back home uh, after the, you know, they're, they're not gonna have money to buy a coffee. I mean, um, or, you know, their money needs to be spent on something else. So um, you really have to understand where people are at. And I think we, everyone, I mean, I've always heard from everyone in OpenStreetMap that that's super important, that the people who um, are from a place are involved in, in mapping. But what, what you have to realize is that um, that you're, you're pulling a thread which unravels a huge amount of complexity in terms of um, our political and economic systems. Um, and uh, I think we, we have the, we know where we're going. We have the, the kind of the North Star of what the, what the ideal is. Everyone is like mapping where they live. Um, but it's gonna the 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 tactics and how we get there are have to look different. There's no there's things adapt um, in different parts of the world, um, and so I think that's the most important thing to to understand about you know a large part of the world which is looks really different than Washington D.C. or or Heidelberg. Thank you, thank you very much, Mika, for your talk and for the reply of the question. I. Think that most of them we replied. I don't know. Is something we missed? Maybe it's my call. Okay. So thank you very much. And sure, thanks. Uh, bye. Thanks, everybody.